Um, recently, I bought my first, uh, uh, first copy of Serrat Centini. For those of you who know uh, the book, uh, it is popularly known as the Kama Sutra of the Javanese uh, world. Javanese Kama Sutra, uh, 200 year old text uh, of this, a great work of the Malay world uh, with, uh, with description of Javanese Kung Fu, such as uh, Kumbang Menghisap Madu and <laughs> Kedudukan Ula Mematuk. I'm not sure whether you'll pass uh, RTM censorship. But uh, when a learned friend came to my office and saw my very thin single volume, it's a 12 volume uh, work, but when my, a very learned friend came to my office and saw my very thin version, single volume thin copy, he asked, where are the rest of them? I said, well, in the census dustbin. Um, somebody said, I think it was Article 19 when we were doing research for this speech. Uh, they said that freedom of information is oxygen to democracy. I think this is probably the, uh, one reason. Too much oxygen burns. Um, I think all of us can agree that there are certain things which should be confidential. Cabinet discussions, for example, uh, this is a well-known argument, should enjoy a level of uh, confidence of trust so that honest opinions can be deliberated in the meeting uh, without the fear of uh, someone's view being manipulated because of uh, irresponsible expose. Uh, of course, the word confident and confidential, I look it up on the net, they share the same Latin word, which really means to have full trust. Matters of uh, national security, uh, public safety, crime prevention, detection, all these are sensitive information which requires some, some level of secrecy at least. And of course, we do not want our personal information from hospitals, whether government or private, from telcos, to be exposed without our consent. In our time, uh, there is a real tension between fighting breaches of personal information, personal data, versus trying to unlock government secrecy. Because, like it or not, in this age and time, personal data, personal information, and public information, they are more intertwined than we can imagine. And of course, we live in the time of uh, what we call uh, the age of explosion of information, where information is being shared almost on a minute by minute uh, basis. We share personal views and opinions on football and politics. Uh, there is partisan news and propaganda. There are stories online about alien invasions and dragons being discovered. There are so-called expert views on the danger of vaccination. We have advertisements ranging from regular products and services to pseudo-scientific alternative medicine, uh, get-rich-quick scams to outright alternative facts. The net effect is that we, as a society, we become overwhelmed with trying to figure out falsehood from truth, or truth from falsehood. Because of this so-called freedom, we spend more time sieving through information, not knowing for sure who or what to trust anymore. And I wrote this uh, little quote in my book, Being Malaysia, second book. Uh, we are chained by our own freedom. We have become less free as a result. 
But having said all that, are we, or is this government, is this administration going to revert to business as usual, like in the previous government? To me, Cynthia is waiting. <laughs> to me, the answer is a clear no. What is business as usual? When I was running a think tank in Penang, I'm just going to describe to you what is business as usual. I, I requested, or rather we, the think tank, requested information as neutral and as safe as uh, statistics on Penang import and export activities. One would imagine this is a very, uh, this, this would be one of those regular day-to-day -day requests. But to our surprise, our request, our application was rejected by the previous government. And the reason given, oh, because previously, when this information was, uh, uh, was given, it was manipulated or misinterpreted by the public. Hence, the government decided not to give them out anymore. Similarly, we have seen, uh, and I myself have experienced in Parliament when asking for uh, stats, statistics and data on sexual crimes. You know, women NGOs have come out saying that this information were denied to them. The fundamental problems in our time today with information, especially with government information, is that whether at the local, at the state, or at the federal level, information is by default a secret. And this is no longer just words of the law represented in legislation such as the Official Secrets Act. It is, or rather it has become a culture within our society, especially within the civil service. I was uh, involved uh, when the Penang State Government created the Penang or the Freedom of Information enactment in Penang. But at the inception of the legislation in Penang, the state legal advisor herself, former, former state legal advisor herself, actually uh, opposed to the new law because she claimed that it was ultra-virus, the constitution, it was against the constitution. Information is seen as a privilege, and this can be clearly seen. I'm going to show you an example. This, uh, this, was, this is a comparison between the original draft proposed by the state legal advisor after we, uh, we forced her to present this, uh, this, the bill at the state assembly and uh, compared to the, the current version or the version adopted by the Penang legislator. The original draft said, it's an enactment to provide disclosure of, of information for public interest and opportunity on access to information made by every department of the state government, and so on and so forth. Uh, we insist, we as in uh, my team and I, we represented DAP as a party to appear before the select committee, and we insist that opportunity on access is not enough. It must be right to access. And so that was adopted by the uh, legislators. Section 5.1 said, any person may be given access. We thought, oh, it's a legal language, but we wanted something stronger. So we proposed that the word may be changed to must, subject to the uh, exemption later, but, and the legislator adopted it. So you can see the attitude or behaviour of the government towards information. Uh, by default, information is seen as a privilege. Freedom of information must not be a privilege. It should be a right. In fact, in my opinion, freedom of information legislations, too, such as the FOI, uh, should be a measure of last resort. Government information should be, by default, easily available and accessible for public consumption. While on the other hand, exemptions must be extraordinary, limited and specific. We need to shift as a country, as a nation, as a society. We need to shift from a culture of secrecy to a culture of openness and transparency when it comes to government information. Of course, this is about big things like human rights, but it is also about helping everyone to make sense of our world better. 
Imagine if data of our city is being published, traffic information, public transport tracking, municipal spending, city hall budget. Not only people outside of the government can better understand the activities and behaviour of uh, our city, but think about the potential in this smart app generation. Someone may create an app if we open this data to them at, at the government level. Someone may create an app to tell you about traffic situation or to recommend public transport routes. Or perhaps an app to monitor real-time uh, tax revenues as well as expenditure of the local government. And I think civil society, both civil society and businesses can benefit from such uh, technology, especially to make investment or advocacy decisions. Or allow me to introduce to you this very brilliant platform by my friend Sinau Project, a tech group advocating for freedom of information in Malaysia. For many years now, they made parliamentary answers given to MPs available as, as searchable documents online. This has never been done. And uh, their website, Parliamentary Documents, under Sinau Project, is a treasure trove of, uh, for researchers, including our stole from the government itself. Our legislation, such as the OSA, Official Secrets Act, is almost 50 years now. It is time for us to review such law to incorporate new thinking, progressive values, as well as new behaviour towards information of our time. Allow me to end this by uh, recapping on these three thoughts. Number one, freedom of information must be the default, default mode of government. Number two, we agree that government must have certain level of confidentiality, but the point is, definition of official secrets must be extraordinary, limited and specific. And finally, there must be a clear shift uh, in our culture, the way we handle information. While we grant access to information, protect whistleblowers, we must also ensure some kind of uh, protection uh, against false and irresponsible use of information. Thank you very much. Our next